get out of my way. One, two, three, four. Alright. Oh fuck. What the fuck? Oh my god. You know, I don't think I ever made a video where I really went into the games that I grew up as a child. Uh, the games that made me fall in love with video games. Um, and I've played quite a lot, you know, especially as an adult. I think I played more as an adult than as a child, which is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Um, but then again, I had less money to buy games, so it makes sense, right? But, um, these are the games that, to me, are the video games that, that kind of formed my love for, uh, the, this hobby and, and the medium. Uh, now these are not necessarily games that I consider the best games of all time. Because believe me, there are a few games that I have nostalgia for that aren't good games. But they're nonetheless games that I grew up with. Um, there are a few games in this pile, though, I do consider one of the, you know some of the best games ever made. Most of them are a little bit in between, and a couple of them are bad. Um, so here's the thing about being a kid, though. When you're a kid, I, I find that you, you had less things to compare to. You know, you could watch really bad movies like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, uh, that one that takes place in feudal Japan. Looking back, it's awful, right? But when you're a kid and you're watching that shit, it doesn't matter. You know, because it's fun. It's starring the turtles. They're your heroes. The quality is what you make of, of, of what you're, you're seeing and not how it's made, if that makes sense. Um... Like, you know, the, the Street Fighter movie, which is fucking horrible. But when you're when I was a kid, that shit didn't matter, man. It was still fun to watch. Same thing with the Mortal Kombat movie. And all other different types of movies that aren't considered good filmmaking. But when you're a kid, it doesn't matter. With video games, at least for me, it was just kind of the same thing. I, you know, I played them. I had less to compare them to. Uh, I didn't know any better, of, you know, whether or not... The games were well programmed or not and uh, I still enjoyed the hell out of them regardless of their faults and a few of them like I said in my opinion are some of the best games ever made uh, but we're just gonna jump right in so when I was a kid uh, when we were kids uh, my, my brothers and I um, we were a Sega family we never really got into Nintendo period until like the Wii uh, and at that point, I was kind of out of my childhood phase, right? I was 13 years old. I was, you know, turning into an adolescent. And at that point, games have be were becoming a little less nostalgic for me. There were still a few that I I'll save at the very end, uh, you know, that did come out during my early adolescence that I really, really thought were special. Um, but we were not a big Nintendo family. We were a Sega family. We bought the Sega Genesis first, and then the Sega Saturn, and then the Sega Dreamcast. And then uh, between that time, we also had a Nintendo Game Boy and a Game Boy Color, and then right after, we got a Game Boy Advance. We had a few games on the Game Boy, but the only one that really stuck out to me on the Game Boy, because let's face it, it when it came to playtime, the Game Boy paled in comparison to all the times I played Sega games. Um, we didn't have that many Game Boy games. We had, we had very few Game Boy Color games, like Rainbow Six. Uh, we had we did have some good Game Boy Advance games, like Metroid Fusion and uh, and Golden Sun. Uh, but the only one that I particularly played a lot of that wasn't really in any other system that we had was Dr. Mario on the Game Boy. <laughs> yes, this is the first game I'm showing, but it's not the first game that I, I fell in love with, believe me. I, I never really fell in love with the game, period, but it's kind of like the closest Nintendo ever got to 
to stealing my childhood. <laughs> a freaking Dr. Mario game. It's a puzzle puzzle game with Mario. Um, we never really grew up with, with Super Mario, and we never grew up with Legend of Zelda. We did grow up with Metroid, you know, because we had a Game Boy, and we, we did play Metroid 2, and uh, Metroid Fusion, Metroid Zero Mission. My brother did get a Nintendo GameCube. He, he played the hell out of, you know, Metroid Prime and stuff like that. Uh, I think right after, because we got a, we got a PlayStation 1 after our whole Sega phase. But I think right before then, we bought a Nintendo 64. And I didn't play a lot of that. I played Mortal Kombat 4, which I didn't really care for. Um, I tried playing that MK Mythology Sub-Zero, which that was a game that was so bad that even back in the day, I thought it was unplayable. That was probably the one game I played as a kid that back then I knew was fucking shit. That's probably the worst video game I've ever played in my life. Uh, <laughs> I'm not joking. Do not play MK Mythology Sub-Zero. Look up Angry Video Game Nerds episode on it. Look up Pro Jared's episode on it. Because I ain't fucking... I ain't touching that again. And neither should you. Um, But yeah, I, I remember the N64 was the first game... The first game system that um allowed my brothers to play Resident Evil 2. Because they first played Resident Evil 1 on the Saturn, and then they played, they had to skip 2 and 3, and played uh, Code Veronica on the Dreamcast. And then, even though I'm, I'm pretty sure Resident Evil 2 and 3 did get Dreamcast releases, I could be wrong, but maybe we just been, didn't find them. I got a PS1, and uh, after the N64, you know, they got Resident Evil 2 again. Um, now, the, there are games that I want to mention, games that I didn't grow up playing, but I grew up watching, because I had, you know, I, I grew up with, you know, three older brothers, and an older sister who was already, she she already moved out, you know, as I was, like, you know, six years old, so, but I, I watched them play a lot of games that I was either not interested at the time in playing, or was too afraid to play because of how scary they looked. And the Resident Evil series was the game series, one of two, the other being Silent Hill, that I watched a lot of, but never played any of them. I mean, I, I did end up playing most Resident Evil games when I became like a teenager, right? When I was a kid, I was way too scared to play them. and But I, but I, I always loved watching them play it. Uh, I watched them play, you know, the Panzer Dragoon games on the Dream... Uh, I'm sorry, the Saturn... Uh, I watched them play a lot of Shenmue on the Dreamcast, and uh, that that was nostalgic to me, you know, looking back. I, I didn't play them, but I watched them. And this video is already eight minutes long, and I apologize. But uh, let's get into the games that I actually played that I fell in love with. Uh, games that not that are not necessarily the best games ever, but the games that made my childhood fucking awesome. Sega Genesis is the first, and there's just too many. There's too many to mention. So, I am going to bring out the famous compilation that kind of gave us the six most iconic Genesis games in one. The Sega Genesis six-pack. This comes with Sonic the Hedgehog, Golden Axe, Columns, Revenge of Shinobi, which I always sucked at, I never got far into. Another game that I watched more than I played. Uh, Streets of Rage, which I fucking love. And Super Hang-On, which, yeah, uh, I, I was already onto uh, Road Rash when I started playing Super Hang-On. Um, yeah, these two are probably my favorite games. Memories from the Sega Genesis. Um, playing this, like, launching the six-pack and, and having having that Columns. It's not the Columns theme song, but it was one of the songs from, from Columns. But they used it as the theme song in the uh, the game selection. It was like... Every time I hear that jingle, I, I just, I go back in time. 
I go back 20, 25 years in time when life was so much simpler. And I love the six pack. I love it. There have been recent collections out there that do have all six of these games and more. Uh, I'm referring to the uh, the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection and Sega Genesis Classics, which I do highly recommend to Sega enthusiasts. But there's something about the six pack. It's classic and it's nostalgic. I love the music and the, the, the menus. My my mom used to play columns all the time. She became like the best columns player in the fucking world. Getting, you know, breaking the best score thing. It was like 9,999,999. I was like, holy crap. Um, yeah, six pack is what made me a gamer. If there's one box that I can say made me a gamer, six pack was it. Followed by Road Rash, of course. Uh, my favorite racing series of all time. Uh, I'm holding Road Rash 3 because Road Rash 3 is actually my personal favorite. But I did play Road Rash 1 a lot when I was a kid. I played the Road Rash, um, the one on Saturn that was actually originally a 3DO game, which we never had a 3DO. Who fucking did, right? <laughs> but we had a, a Saturn that had a port of that. And that was fun as well. The later Road Rash games, you know, the ones on PS1 weren't as good, but I still played them. But the ones on Genesis, I didn't play 2 until I became an adult. And for some reason, I just don't like 2. Maybe that's because I didn't grow up with 2. So if I if I didn't grow up with 1, I probably wouldn't have liked 1 either, right? But Road Rash 3, man, it upped the ante in my opinion. It had more weapons to knock people off. It, it was more than just a baseball bat. It had a, you had a crowbar. You had a chain. You had a... You had a, a mace to spray people with. Uh, there was even one dumb weapon. You could like drop oil cans and stuff and make people slide all over the place. Uh, it didn't just take place on the West Coast anymore. It took place all around the world. Brazil, Germany, UK, Australia, Japan. Um, you know, and uh, Road Rash 3 is still probably my favorite racing game of all time. Um... You know, when we got the Wii, we played some Virtual Console, and I was able to play, you know, Mario Kart 64, which was fun, and Mario Kart Wii, and those are both great games too, but my personal favorite is still Road Rash, I'm sorry. There's something about it, there's something about knocking people off their bikes, and, you know, escaping the police, and just, or like, knocking the police off their bikes and shit, like, super illegal shit, like, it's just so fun, and... There's so much carnage, and if, if there's one way that EA could redeem themselves in my heart, it's to bring Road Rash back. Either by remaking them, or maybe just making a collection. I don't know why they abandoned Road Rash. The last one to ever release was Road Rash Jailbreak on the PS1 back in 2000. That's 24 years ago that the Road Rash series has been dormant. It was only active from 1991 to 2000. I love Road Rash, and I, I just don't know what happened. That it, it, There was nothing wrong with it, in my opinion. It was an amazing racing series. Uh, super addictive. Now, the Genesis games had a fair share of really good fighting games. Two of them stick out, of course. Um, the first, obviously, being... Street Fighter 2 um, Special Championship Edition. This what this is one of the versions that lets you fight as um, it lets you play as the four bosses. So there's 12 players instead of eight. Um, and um, th there's been countless versions of Street Fighter 2, right? And Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, Super Street Fighter 2, the original in the arcades. But this is the one I grew up with. And I have no regrets. I love the sound design of this version. I love the music the most in this version. Um, yeah, Street Fighter 2 Special Championship Edition. I played this a lot as a kid. Loved it. I also played a lot of Mortal Kombat when I was a kid. Uh, the first three Mortal Kombat games. Um, I do remember, however, playing Ultimate NK3 the most, though. 
because I thought it was the most accessible. I thought it was the easiest one, right? Mortal Kombat 2 is considered by many as the best one, but I always thought it was too hard for me. I, I don't think I ever beat it on the Genesis. I beat it on the Saturn. I think the Saturn version had more dumbed-down AI, and that's why I was able to beat it on the Saturn, but I don't think I was ever able to beat MK2 in the Genesis. I was able to beat 1 and 3 on the Genesis and Ultimate MK3 on the Genesis. And um, I love I love Mortal Kombat, okay? I don't even care what Mortal Kombat... Well, not, not MK Mythologies. Not that one. Not that one. And maybe not MK4 either. But the rest, I really like. I even like the PS2 ones, okay? But if I were to choose one, it'd probably be Ultimate MK3 is probably my personal favorite Mortal Kombat game of all time. Uh, because it, it added Scorpion that was missing in the original three. And I had a couple other new characters too, I believe. Like Jade. And um, I think Noob Sabot. I think this was his first appearance. Um, so yeah. The two best fighting games on the Genesis. Um, now, lastly, on the Sega Genesis, I want to mention how many licensed games that there are. There were so many licensed games that, that my brothers and I played. We played Aladdin. We played uh, a Ren and Stimpy game. Uh, a couple Terminator games. One of them was fucking horrible. The controls were awful. That was another game that, as a kid, I knew it was pretty bad back then, just because of how bad the controls were. But I think my two favorite, my two personal favorites, are Stargate, which is based on the 1994 sci-fi movie starring Kurt Russell, uh, and um, looking back, it is pretty janky. You know, the platforming kind of sucked and stuff. But as a kid, I, I always thought it was, like, a little, like, kind of faithful to the, the movie in a way. You know, they got the characters right. Um, they got the settings right and stuff. And I, I really enjoyed Stargate. Even though if I went back now, I probably would enjoy it a lot less than I did back then. This is one of the games on this pile I have here that I grew up with that looking back probably is one of the worst ones but I still have nostalgia for the music and stuff and uh, the theme song of, of this of this version is so good I, I liked it more than the theme song of the goddamn movie <laughs> Stargate you might like it you might not I don't know I mean it's developed by these idiots right here acclaim they did not make good games, so... Retrospectively, I was surprised that I liked this one so much as I did. I probably wouldn't anymore, though. Another licensed game that I, um, I played that I really, really loved... Uh... Virtual Bart. Virtual Bart! You play as Bart. And he gets stuck in this, he's like a guinea pig. He gets stuck in this really unethical experiment and uh, you kind of like play roulette with his body and whatever his head lands on is one of the six levels that you play next. It's a pretty hard game. Each, each level is completely different with like completely different controls. So you couldn't really get used to playing it. It was like six games in one. But you had to, you had to beat all six of them to beat the game. Uh, there, there was one where you're playing as a dinosaur, uh, dodging obstacles and stuff, and people throwing, you know, bones at you and stuff. Cavemen throwing sticks or whatever. And then there was another, another level where you're playing as a pig, trying to escape from a, a slaughterhouse. Uh, there was one where you were trying to navigate a, uh, a water slide. <laughs> there was one where you were on a motorcycle. Uh, there was one where, where you were trying to escape the house as a baby. You were, like, jumping off tree branches and stuff without, you know, and, and if you fall, you die. Uh, and there was one more. There was a, um, ah, the tomato, the tomato throwing in the, uh, on the school grounds. <laughs> Hitting all the kids with tomatoes. It, it, it was a fun game. Uh, my favorite part about it was that it had a practice mode, so you could actually choose which one you want to play in practice, so... I guess, 
I, I guess that was there for a reason, to give you practice, to keep, get you prepared for the main game, but I never beat it. Um, a after you beat the tomato level, you get to throw eggs. I never made it that far, but my sister did, apparently. Uh, I'm gonna have to watch a YouTube video on that to see, um, that, but yeah. Now, for the Sega Saturn, the Sega, didn't, the Sega Saturn didn't have many good games. Like I said, I watched my brothers play Panzer Dragoon games. Uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga is widely regarded as the best Saturn game of all time. Uh, it's super rare now. And um, I think my older one of my older brothers still has a copy of it. Uh, it's worth probably a couple grand. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, I played some Virtua Cop and... House of the Dead, there were a lot of rail shooters that had, like, that rail gun, you know, and Sega Saturn, I think, tried to capitalize a lot on that, and I, I never really got into those kinds of games, rail shooters, and, uh, there were some point-and-click games I couldn't really get into, like D, and, uh, Mansion of Hidden Souls, I, I, I think I have more, more nostalgia for Mansion of Hidden Souls than I do D, but there, there were a lot of, like, weird filler games, that just weren't very good. Do you want to know what the one game that I grew up with on Saturn that that has stayed with me? It's probably the worst game on Sega Saturn. Worse than all of those, believe it or not. I'm not proud of this, okay? But at the time, I didn't know what to think. Like I said, there was nothing to compare it to. It was a 3D action RPG uh, with, like, full motion video protagonist in a sprite world, and it was just so ugly. But when I was a kid, it didn't matter to me. Virtual Hide Lie. Again, unless you grew up playing this, I do not recommend playing this. Watch Pro Jared's video on it, or Angry Video Game Nerd's video on it. To, I'm reading the back of this. To experience RPG any more real, you would have to go there yourself. What does that even mean? It doesn't exist. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's an action RPG. It's a fantasy where you play as this guy named Jim, uh, this loser with leather armor. You can get you can get stronger armor. You can get various swords. Uh. There's really not a, a lot to say about it. it. It's just a wacky game, man. It's so ugly. The frame rate is so bad. It's like five frames per second. I'm not even exaggerating. And it's like that throughout the whole game. It's only like two or three hours long. So I guess it's just, you know, it's not that painful to play. Um, but I'm, I'm afraid to try this now. Because this is one of the most defining games of my childhood. I don't know why. I was so drawn to this crap when I was a kid. Uh, I like the music. I dig the so bad it's good, I guess. I guess, you know, looking back now. Um, the controls, I remember not being too good. The camera angles were horrid in, in the more closed off areas of the game. And um, yeah, it, it's also very linear. It has this huge, like, pre-generated world where there's like, there's like over 40 billion possible worlds awaiting your exploration. The problem is, they all feel exactly the same, and they all have the same linear objective. You go to a cemetery, and then you go to a vampire's castle, and then you go to an, uh, an underground dungeon, and then a, a, a maze, and then like a, 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 a volcano, and like another castle or whatever, and it, it's the same objective with the same overlays. Like, I, I don't care that it's placed in different spots. It doesn't, doesn't make a second playthrough feel any different. <laughs> yeah, uh, bad game. Bad game all around. It's about finding fairies and, and saving the princess from this weirdo. Um, it's Virtual Hide Light. It is the one Sega Saturn game that I grew up playing that for some reason or another, stuck with me. You know, it kind of, it's kind of like a, a horrible precursor to Dark Souls or Dragon's Dogma, you know. It, it has like a, 
it's got that that camera angle where you're you're no longer it's no longer top down you know you, your your character is up in front fighting stuff you know like like the newer ninja gaiden games or you know stuff like that dark siders i it that is the worst game on this pile on to sega dreamcast uh again not i didn't play it as much as genesis but i did i i do think it, it was better than saturn uh the dreamcast i didn't play a lot of but i played a few games that i really really dug as a child um the first one was a game called toy commander this is a forgotten gem you just play as toys, uh, trucks, um, tanks, planes, helicopters, going around shooting stuff in people's kitchens and living rooms. Um, I never made it far into this. I think most of the time I played like the practice mode in this one too. Um, but there's a lot of nostalgia here. I remember there being like a black cat. In this game used to be able to play with um i don't know why sega never ported this onto another system never got a port never got a remaster i don't know why not because it was bad i mean it, it did get good reviews and it was considered a great game i think ign gave it like an 8.9 or something uh it was really fun and i don't know why they didn't uh they didn't do anything with it i if this ever came out again i would buy it day one and play it i would do a let's play of it all that good stuff man and um oh i'm sorry i'm dropping stuff sega dreamcast was also my introduction to tony hawk tony hawk's pro skater dude for a while this made me want to become a professional skateboarder in real life um, I, I couldn't really get into the first one, but the second one, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, holy crap, man, what a game. You, it was so much better than the first one in, in every way. It was better in every way to the first one. You can make your own, uh, you can make your own skater. You can name him, make him as tall as you like. You can make him fat. Um, you could also make your own parks, too. Your own skate parks. And it was so good. Um, the levels were so good. Uh, Tony X Pro Skater 2 is one of, my, one of my favorite games as a child. And in my opinion, this is one of the best games ever made, too. Um, I also really love 3 and 4. Tony X 3 and 4 were amazing as well. Uh, the last, the last Tony Hawk game I really liked was Underground, uh, I think which came out in 2003, but if I were to choose, I mean, I, I gotta choose the one that made me fall in love with Tony Hawk, right? Maybe it's not my favorite, maybe like Tony Hawk 3 is my favorite, because, uh, they, they kind of added more stuff to the park editor. <laughs> they added, like, buildings and houses and stuff to the park editor, made, made it feel like you could, like, make your own town in a way. But Tony Ox Pro Skater 2 is, um, is the game that made me a Tony Hawk fan. Not for life, because the games, the games over time did end up getting worse and worse. And then got better with the remake of 1 and 2. Um, but yeah. On Sega Dreamcast, I, I spent a lot of time watching my brothers play games like Slave Zero and Vigilante 8. I did play some Crazy Taxi, but I was never too crazy about it. Uh, and like Zombie Revenge and uh, House of the Dead 2. Um, I, but I did watch and play a lot of Resident Evil Code Veronica and Shenmue. And, you know, from, from my eye, you know, from my, my memory and my vision, those games are nostalgic to me. But like I said at the beginning of this video, I didn't play them. Uh, I, I mean, I played a little bit of them when I, when I got a little older. But not when I was a, when I was a kid. The same thing can be said about PlayStation One. When we got the PlayStation One, my brothers got very into Final Fantasy, and I never really got into that until much later on, uh, when I was a teenager. But um, but 
PS1 was a system that we got that um, made me really obsessed because that was when I was starting to figure out what genres I really loved. Okay. Now, here's another game that I consider one of the greatest games of all time in, in almost any form or any version. Doom. I have the PS1 version in my hand right now. Now, Doom came in all sorts of forms. Most of them, however, was kind of a copy of the original Doom on the PC, where it had rock music and stuff, and that was cool. And, you know, I mean, when I first played a version like that, I couldn't really get into it, but I have since grown to not mind the rock music in, in Doom. As a matter of fact, the new Dooms excel mostly because of how good the music is in those ones. Uh, but the, my, my first Doom game that I thoroughly played, we had the Saturn. We had the Saturn version first, but when I got the PlayStation version of Doom, that, this, this is where I decided I love shooters. Now, the PlayStation and Saturn versions are different in a way. Uh, graphically, the lighting is darker in these ones. And um, in this particular one, for some reason, all the doors were like completely the color of like the keys that you need to open them. Like the blue doors were completely blue, not just on the sides, but like completely blue. Same with, like, the red and yellow doors. I never really understood that. It's kind of gross. But that's, like, a nitpick. Because this version more than makes up for it with its creepy, eerie soundtrack. And it, it has most of the levels, but, like, a, a rearranged version of both Doom 1 and 2. So, it you know, it has, it has them kind of... Maybe not, not smushed together. I think they have them separately from Doom and Doom 2. But the levels themselves aren't arranged the same way as um, as the original PC version from what I recall. It has new lighting. It has new uh, ambient music. which is, it, it, it went for a more horror approach. Which personally I think I do prefer over the action. Maybe that's because I this is the version that I grew up with. So, you know... It's one of those deals. But I love this version of Doom. This version of Doom is probably like in my top five favorite games of all time. I'm not even exaggerating. I love this game so much. Um, even though it is missing a couple things from the uh, the original. Like uh, in Doom 2 had the arc vials. Apparently they weren't able to put that in here. Uh, because of how fast they moved and it, it was just it was pushing the PlayStation 1 too much I guess and they could they couldn't fit it in here there might have been a couple other things that couldn't fit but you know what I forgive it because the music more than makes makes up for it the music's the number one one reason why this is my favorite version of Dune very creepy very ambient I love it next up on games that made me fall in love with shooters this this time around, it's a third-person shooter, not a first-person shooter. That is, of course, and I already covered this on my channel, Siphon Filter. Now, the, the whole Siphon Filter series, I loved as a kid. I recently played through all of them, except for Omega's Train, which unfortunately didn't get ported on PS4 and PS5. But I played all five of the other ones. And, um, the first one's still my favorite. There's something about the first one. I just, I love the story. I love the, the levels, like the, like the park and the, 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 that creepy Romer's Cathedral, that giant church that you explore. And it's, it is by far the most nostalgic one. I love Siphon Filter. I'm never getting rid of this. I also own digitally the ps4 and ps5 versions but i i'm never gonna let this go it's not worth anything i mean these go for like five to ten bucks online but still i i still don't want to get rid of it you know 
not because it's collectible, but because it's nostalgic. Uh, I've I've used up more than enough time with Siphon Filter on this channel. If you want to watch all my Siphon Filter Let's Plays, uh, it's all there on my playlist, Siphon Filter. So, yeah, I, I love Siphon Filter, and I, I want them to make another one, but it, it's... It's been like 15 years at least since they made it's been like 17 years Seven maybe 18. I don't know. It's been a long time since they made a new siphon filter Even if they were to just like remake it or reboot it or whatever. I'd be fine with that. Okay My first foray into stealth games Was it wasn't <laughs> I just spoiled it. Uh, it wasn't Metal Gear Solid like 90% of everyone else. It was Tenshu. Uh, specifically Tenshu 2. I had this one first and then we got Tenshu 1. But by the time I got to Tenshu 1, I didn't really care for it because I thought Tenshu 2 was just better in every way. Uh, it was a prequel. Um, takes place before the events of the first game. And, um, I, I just like the controls more, I like the characters more, I like the bosses more. Uh, but most importantly, I like the fact that you can make your own levels. It was at this point when I turned into a gamer who loved user-generated content, user-created content. I, I loved making my own parts in, um... Tony Hawk, I loved making my own levels in Tensu, placing... The enemies and placing my own strategies on how to get by them uh, without getting spotted. It even has like seven different objectives that you can choose to make your own levels with. Tensu 2, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated PS1 games of all time. Um, it's less supernatural than 1 and 3. Um, it's kind of about a civil war. And it had a lot of small features that just weren't really in... Or at least weren't prominent in the other ones. You know what I mean? Like like Ricky Maru, the main character, having a, a thing to put his sword away on his back. You know, as opposed to the others where he always has a sword out. You know, there, there were so many different touches in, in, uh, in Tenshi 2 that were kind of omitted from the rest. You know, Tenshi 2 is my favorite Tenshi game and it always will be. This is another series that was kind of killed off with subsequent entries that weren't very good but like the first three Tensu games awesome but Tensu 2 is the game that made my childhood sweet and the game that made me fall in love with user generated content um being able to make my own levels and death traps and just placing everything where I want them to be placed placing pitfalls mm, good times Tensu 2 this one uh, is a game that I feel like if I went back to, it's another one of those games that if I feel like if I went back to, I wouldn't love it as much as I did when I was a kid. And that is Legend of Mana. Um, this actually isn't really an RPG. It, it has RPG elements, it has RPG style progression. But the combat system was very much a hack-and-slash game. It was a, kind of like a 2D hack-and-slash. But what I loved the most about it was the fact that you could, like, plant... You could plant levels on, like, a world map. And you could have... You could kind of choose where to put them on the map. Again, kind of like a user-generated thing that I really dug. And I really liked how you could name your own pets and, uh plant your own, you know, stuff, make your own garden, um, it was really cool, uh, now, this game was heavily criticized back in the day because it didn't really have a main plot, it had a bunch of, it was just like a, a game with like a bunch of subplots, and I, I don't even know if it has an ending, maybe it does, maybe you have to like do all of the subplots, I never got to that point. But I just remember spending dozens and dozens of hours as a kid during summer vacation. I think it was like summer of 2001 or 2002. Where I was just doing nothing but playing this game. And I got so engrossed in it. And um, I love the art style. I love how it kind of has like a, 
like a 1930s Disney. You can't really see it. You see that, that tree guy right here? With like the big nose. It kind of resembles like a 1930s or a 1940s Disney style cartoon. Art art style. It's a spin-off of the Mana series. Which I never really got into. I think I tried Secret of I tried Secret of Mana when it came out on Virtual Console. I couldn't really get into it. Um, maybe I'll try it again someday. I think I actually own them. I own the first three Mana games on the Nintendo Switch. I think I have like the classic versions. Not the remakes, but the classic originals on Nintendo Switch. So I'll, I'll, I'll get around to them someday, but... I don't know, for some reason, I, I doubt I'll like them as much as Legend of Mana. It's kind of one of a kind in my eyes. It's more unique. It may not be as good, but it's more unique, I guess. And that kind of... Oh, wait. That doesn't do it for my PS1 games. I have one more PS1 games. It was kind of the first and only city simulator I played. Well, I did play Tropico 5 on PS4. But, uh... I also played a lot of, without knowing how to play it, SimCity 2000. This is a game I played a lot of, and yet never understood anything about it. I used to just plant roads, and bridges, and police stations, and hospitals, and schools. I never really, I never really learned how to actually play it in terms of, like, progressing my city, you know? But maybe one of these days I'll pop it back in on my, my PS3 and uh, try it again. But I, I love the music. Very nostalgic. Um, that's all there is really to say about it. SimCity 2000. Apparently it is considered by many to be the best SimCity game. So I got kind of lucky there. It is very nostalgic. I, I'm looking at the screenshots right now and I'm just like, oh shit, I remember. I remember. This was cool. I know I didn't understand a thing about it, but it was cool. Now, on to the PS2. Actually, you know what? From this point forward, because there's there's actually very little that I'm gonna show you from this point forward. So for uh, I only have like five more games to show you. <laughs> games that made my childhood awesome. I have two PS2 games. One original Xbox game and two Xbox 360 games. <clears throat> Chronologically, uh, at least from the time that I got them, I'm going to kick it off with Onimusha on PS2. I'm choosing Onimusha 2 because Onimusha 2 is my personal favorite Onimusha game out of the four that were on PS2. The only four Onimusha games. This was another series that got abandoned too soon in my opinion. And um. But Onimusha 2 is my personal favorite. Um. I did do a let's play back in early 2019. Of Onimusha when it got remastered on PS4. Um. That was a fun time. And I. I wish they could remaster 2, because if they remaster Onimusha 2, oh my god, I will happily do a Let's Play of it. I would come back to YouTube if they someday remastered Onimusha 2. Um, and all the other Onimusha games. I mean, they're all good games. It's a great series altogether, but Onimusha 2 is my personal favorite. I love how it had, like, this town hub where you get to make friends, and it had this kind of, like, gift-giving system to your friends, you could buy stuff for your friends, um, and it was really cool, you know, I, I feel like each entry was a little bit different from the last one, the first one was more of like a survival horror, kind of like a, an ancient Resident Evil game, but you're, you're fighting demons instead of zombies, Onimusha 2 is a little, a little less like that, but still kind of similar, um, and then Onimusha 3 and 4 were delving into more RPG aspects, they were much longer games, the games got longer and longer. Um, but Onimusha 2, I have a soft spot for. Uh, this was the game I, I believe I played the most of growing up. Yeah, I really love Onimusha. I want them to come back. I mean, Onimusha 1 coming back as a port was... It, it was a nice scratch to it, but... Uh, 
but it just wasn't quite enough for me, you know. I just hope Onimusa comes back someday. Another series that I want to come back, but unfortunately they're not doing anything with, Splinter Cell. This is my favorite stealth series of all time. And Splinter Cell Chaos Theory is my favorite stealth game of all time. And is actually one of my top 10 favorite games of all time. Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. I actually originally played this on the GameCube. So I, I do have more nostalgia with the level design of the GameCube. So that kind of... That kind of influences me to think that the GameCube version was better. But in reality, the GameCube version was objectively worse. It had bugs that prevented you from getting 100% completion. Because it had a couple objectives here and there that were bugged. And it was back in the day when you couldn't fix bugs with patches. So when a game came out buggy, it was buggy for good. And the GameCube version, unfortunately, as much as I really loved that version, had a couple bugs. That, uh, that stopped you from getting 100% in stats. The Xbox version is the best version of this. Um, same with like the Xbox versions of, well, pretty much all of them. Well, maybe not the first game. The the first one or so, I think the PS2 version had a, had a, had a few extra levels that kind of filled more backstory. Uh, but the, the Xbox versions of Pandora Tomorrow, Chaos Theory, and Double Agent, I think were the best versions of that. Um, after Chaos Theory, the series kind of went downhill from them. You, you know, like, double, like they're all good games, but Double Agent, the direction was kind of messy. I didn't like how they split into two different versions of Double Agent in, in terms of story. I, I didn't like that. I didn't like the direction of Conviction, how they made it more action. Uh, Blacklist, in my opinion, was the best Splinter Cell game since this one. But it suffered from not having Michael Ironside as the voice of Sam Fisher. He was the voice of him throughout all of them, besides Blacklist. And, and it sucked that he was no longer Sam Fisher. Um, but I still loved uh, I still loved playing all of them. Like e even Conviction, which is the worst Splinter Cell game in my opinion, was still pretty fun as an action game. It was still really solid. Um, but Splinter Cell Chaos Theory was actually the first one that I, that I played through, and I fell in love with it, and, you know, when I, when I played the first two, they, they couldn't top the third one, but I still really loved them a lot. I don't think I'll ever play a stealth game that tops Splinter Cell, at least the first three. Um, you know, I played plenty, I played the, the Dishonored games, those were really great as well. Played Metal Gear Solid Five. that was fun. You know, but, I mean, look at this man. I mean, look look at the cover. He's upside down with his goggles. He's about to knife this motherfucker. A fucking 9.9 .9 out of 10 from Xbox Magazine. You know, they even declared it the best game ever on Xbox. And I agree. I think it's better than Halo 1 and 2. I think it's better than Shenmue 2. I think it's better than Doom 3. Better than Ninja Gaiden. I think Splinter Cell Chaos Theory is the best game to ever grace the original Xbox. Um, I highly recommend it. You know, the number one action franchise on it. It was so acclaimed. It was so acclaimed. It's amazing. Everything about it is perfect. The story, the gameplay, the lighting, the interactions between you and your 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 characters talking to you. The, you know, the, the hacking system, the, the lock picking, the controls, everything about Chaos Theory was perfect. I feel like Homelander from The Boys. <laughs> it was perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and now we have another game that's actually on my top 10. The, these, okay, so the, the rest of these games are actually on my top 10 favorite games of all time. Bully. On PS2. This might be my favorite Rockstar game of all time. It's either this or Grand Theft Auto 4. But this one I enjoy playing more. So I, I think this has the edge. 
you know, on an enjoyment factor. Bully is basically GTA, except you're playing as a teenage kid uh, in school. And so there's no murder. There's no carjacking, although you can steal other kids' bicycles and stuff like that. You can give kids wedgies. You can punch kids. You know, you, you can have school fights and stuff. You can throw, you know, uh, you can have, you have a slingshot. Um, you can do all sorts of silly antics in it. You, you can get in trouble with, like, you know, the, the campus security and the police outside of the campus and in town. Um, it takes place in, like, a, a boarding town in New England. And it, it, it really does a good job of feeling like it's, it's in New England. Because I'm from New England, you know. So when, when I play this, I'm like, yeah, this definitely feels like a northeastern type of setting. Kind of like a Silent Hill type feel. I love Bully. I love how you can go to class and, you know, you, you, can, you can get graded. And I love how... There's different cliques that that you can either hang out with or get in fights with. You know, get you got like the bullies, the preppies, the really poor um, greasers. You got the nerds and the jocks. One of my top ten favorite games of all time is Bully. There is not one thing about this game that I would ever change. Um, it's just perfect. I, I the gym classes, the wrestling, the dodgeball. Um, the game is basically kind of like a revenge story about, uh, you're, you're a new kid and you get betrayed by this really psychopathic kid who, uh, who basically gradually turns the whole school against you and you kind of have to like fight them all to like regain their trust back and stuff and then finally get back at this bully that, that's been harassing you throughout the whole game. Um, bully is phenomenal. It, it is, in my opinion, Rockstar's most underrated gem. Uh, it gets overshadowed by GTA. I think it's better than GTA. I really do. Like, I, I really believe that it, it has the most charm out of any Rockstar game. It is among their most innocent games. Because Rockstar always pushes the envelope when it comes to violence and stuff. And, you know, I had, like, Grand Theft Auto and Manhunt... Max Payne 3, Red Dead, uh, but Bully is just like, it, it, it's, it holds a special place in my heart. We'll leave it at that. You, I, I used to have so much fun. I used to play that. I got that for Christmas of 2006, and it was the best game I ever got on Christmas. There was even a part, because it, it, it takes place throughout a school year. So, like, the, the third act took place during winter time and there was like an ep there was like a a scene that took place during christmas time where your your i think it was like your grandmother or something sent you like a a christmas sweater like a really embarrassing christmas sweater and like they 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 called your name over the intercom about it and it was like the most embarrassing thing and it was just like come on how do you not love this this is like every teenage this is like every teenager's experience rolled into one. You could like make out with girls and stuff. You could even make out with like gay kids too. Like, <laughs> what the fuck, man? Like, I love Bully. Love Bully. You could, they, they all had their own unique names and personalities. You know how like with, with the GTA games on PS2, right? Um, You know, you would, you would walk alongside the sidewalk and you would see pedestrians and there would be copies of the same pedestrian they would they would have they would reuse the same skin and those pedestrians would have no names at all every single character in this game in bully had their own name their own personality their own sexual orientation it was so detailed that for a game that was kind of small in terms of the map size it was the smallest rockstar game i think I also think it was among their deepest games, though. It had a lot of depth in its systems, in the mechanics, and in, in the personalities. And it's because of that that I feel like Bully was among, if not their most detailed game to date. And maybe Red Dead Redemption 2 overthrows it. Red Dead Redemption 2 is probably their most detailed game. But Bully's not far behind. It really isn't. Um... 
anyone who's played it knows what I mean. And if you haven't played it, play it. I believe it's on the PlayStation Store uh, for $9.99 on PS4. Backwards compatible with PS5. Definitely check it out. Bully. Bully is one of my all-time favorite games, and that will never change. I'll be 80 years old, and I'll still look back at this game with glee. And now, we're going into the Xbox 360. These are the last two games that I really, really fell in love with to the point where it had a deep impact on my life. These two games might actually be my two favorite games of all time. The original Bioshock. An absolute masterpiece. Not perfect, but a masterpiece. Um, takes place in an underwater city. And uh, you play as this guy who doesn't really know who he is. And he's getting... He's being directed by someone... I, I'm not going to spoil I don't want to spoil it because the plot twist in this game is so tremendous and heartbreaking and just painful. I don't want to talk about the story at all. You simply need to experience Bioshock. Um, the other two that came after it, Bioshock 2 and Bioshock Infinite, are, are also really great games. But Bioshock 1, the original, is hands down one of the greatest video games to ever be made. Uh, it's probably my favorite game of all time still. I love everything about it. I love the gameplay. I love the creepy the creepy atmosphere. I love how terrifying these foes are. The big daddies are so formidable and how they're protecting these little sisters and, and, and their powers. And um, I, I love how you can like shoot stuff out of your hand. You got the plasmids, you got the, the, the lightning, the flames, uh, you got the bees. <laughs> You get the, the the telepathic abilities. You can pick things up with your mind and throw them at people. You can throw people up and throw them against the walls. I love Bioshock. I didn't play this until I was around 14 or 14 and a half, I believe. Yeah, I, it was the first game we got on Xbox 360. I believe it was December of 2007. I was I was 14 and a half. Yes. And then right after that, we got Mass Effect. Not this version, the, the original version. I got this. Uh, Zach actually got this for me for one, one of my birthdays. The collector's edition of Mass Effect 1. I don't care what people, what people say about this one. I know technically... Speaking, it was inferior to Mass Effect 2 and 3, but story-wise, and in terms of RPG mechanics, in my opinion, this is still the best Mass Effect game. I'm not going to get into it. Like I said, like with, Ma like with Bioshock 1, you gotta experience it. I can't tell it to you how deep this universe goes. How expansive this, this sci-fi universe really is. You gotta experience it for yourself. Mass Effect 1. It, 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 I know it's got problems. It had frame rate issues. It had texture problems. It was a buggy game. But it left a strong impression on me as a, a sci-fi... From a sci-fi perspective. It's probably my favorite sci-fi game of all time. Mass Effect 1. It had its, it, its moments where it was like so bad it was good. Like It had some unintentionally funny moments. And maybe that has an influence on me. Maybe that's part of the reason why it's my favorite of the trilogy. I know, I know most people say Mass Effect 2 is the best. But to me, that's actually the worst. <laughs> because I, I thought Mass Effect 2 had the weakest story. And the most watered down RPG mechanics. It was more... There were the 2 and 3 were more corridor shooters. Whereas 1 actually felt like an action RPG. Um, to me, anyway. I still recommend the whole trilogy. I do not recommend Mass Effect Andromeda. I thought that game sucked. But the Mass Effect trilogy, the original trilogy, amazing. Definitely check it out. Um, you, you, you would probably be surprised at how much you really enjoy them. It might take some time getting used to Mass Effect 1, but you know, if you're looking for really good, solid third-person cover shooters, Mass Effect 2 and 3 are, are going to be your go-tos. You're going to fall in love with those games. Um... But as an RPG goer, I do prefer the first one over 2 and 3. But I still like 2 and 3 a lot. Okay, don't get me wrong. 
but Mass Effect 1 is the game that made me fall in love with the series. I'm one of those guys who holds up his hand and says, I liked Mass Effect before it was cool. This was Mass Effect before it was considered cool to like Mass Effect. Um, so yeah. Those are the games that defined my childhood. I'm sorry that I spent like an hour. Uh, th th this went on literally like twice as long as I thought it would be. But it just goes to show you how passionate I still am about playing at least older games. I've been playing a lot of PS3 games and, and 360 games lately because I feel like that was kind of the last generation where game developers really cared about putting out quality products. And when I say quality, what I mean is games that are polished. I'm getting sick and tired of these new games that are coming out that either come out buggy or they come out incomplete, you know. I'm getting sick of, of games that have DLCs. I'm getting tired of it, you know. I, I want games to come out in their, in their full complete, their, their full completed vision, I guess. You know, and when I see a game that, that ends up getting DLC, I look at that game and I'm like, they either didn't think of everything they wanted to, or they wanted to push out the game as fast as possible without releasing this thing with it, or they wanted to capitalize on it. All of these excuses are excuses that I don't support. Um, you either you either make the game come out in its completed, fully envisioned, polished form, or you wait. Like, th there is so much crunch in the games industry now, and, and so much uh, of, of just pushing games out too fast. You know, and games are only becoming more and more expensive to make, they're only becoming more and more expensive to buy, and... I don't know, so sometimes when I when I go back to these older games, I, I... I find a sense of refuge. You know, and I feel like... Looking back at the older games is what keeps me liking games as a whole. You know, there's a reason why I haven't been making a lot of videos lately. is because most of my videos stem from let's plays some new games or reviews from new games or news about, news about new games. And lately, these past few months, I've just been playing old games. Not not old old, but you know, a little older, like 10, 15 years ago older, like Fallout 3 in New Vegas, and you know, the older Forza Motorsport games, and stuff like that. But yeah, guys, uh, yeah, that was an hour long rant, or not a rant, but you know, me just talking about my childhood, my, my childhood, my preteens, and my early adolescence, before things started going a little out of hand with DLCs and patches and shit. Uh, yeah. These were the games that defined my childhood. And, uh, I wouldn't change a thing. And, you know, I, I have no regrets about what I really played. You know, my only regret is that I never grew up really playing Nintendo games. The closest I got to it was playing the GameCube and the Wii. And that's about it. But by the time I was playing Virtual Console on the Wii, I was already 14 or 15 years old, and I was at that age where I didn't really care about Mario, you know, or Zelda or any of that stuff. But that doesn't mean they're not great games. That just means I, unfortunately, I didn't grow up playing those games. I just grew up playing Sega and PlayStation. So, yeah, uh, what are the games that you played? You know, um... Uh, if you want to share, write it in the comments down below. I'd be happy to, to kind of share this moment with you guys. Maybe you can make a, a recap video, a response video, whatever. Um, just uh, keep calm and game on. And uh, until next time, thank you for watching. The Gamer Gods! Bam!